This is, this is, this is. So, Darren texted me. He goes, hey, I'm doing this thing. I had already seen it online. I was like, huh, this is interesting. And it's called What to Expect When Brand Building. Yeah. And he's all about that. And do you follow him on social media? I do, yeah. Yeah, so he, he really, you know, there was a clip today where he said, and this was actually, I was there for this clip. I, I watched this happen during the, the conference. Yeah. And, on, and I'll get to the building and all that. But he goes, I went back and I, did, I had decided I'm going to, I'm going to start posting more on socials or whatever. Yeah. I, I went back and I posted a video from two years ago and it was Jason Mraz or something like that, something big. Yeah. Um, and, you know, posted it, boom. That led to the right person seeing that post and saying, oh, I didn't know you worked with Jason Mraz or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and f- half a million dollar in revenue. Really? Yeah. That's so, like, true. that's when he started to take, like, I better take this more seriously. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so, <clears throat> building brand is what he is sort of putting his his stakes in. And it's such a broad thing, you know? So, right. he had all these different guys come out, and we all went to this office that's new. It's just like a big open building yeah with a cabinet in front of that makes it kind of look like a wall behind where the bathroom would be and it's set up like a almost like a a, lo- a a lobby of a hotel oh okay so you know you can go back and get coffee in the back and the bathrooms in the back but you walk in and there's desks on the edges and in the middle it's all like a couch and chairs all facing each other and, oh okay and, and then back towards the coffee there's a table to put food on yeah do do meetings mm-hmm. do deals whatever so anyway we uh I show up to Moscow uh his buddy who, who is now the president okay. David David Shannon the only black guy in Moscow he's got a long, <laughs> long beard <laughs> I believe that yeah yeah I mean I didn't see one other other <laughs> black guy in Moscow he you got to get a good good sense of humor about it. But they call him Chocolate Knox. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know why. I didn't ask. But, I mean, I know why chocolate, but why not? Right, right. Uh, so, anyway, uh, that he's a cool guy. So, I just started talking kind of business and legacy. And I say these words because that's like business terms. But, yeah. Or just like he was asking me about the band and like what I'm doing. And, and he was, we were talking about Drake and Kendrick Lamar me yeah, yeah. He, he was saying that hey it's like it's almost like Kendrick is is standing up to the cult before the culture mm-hmm. saying oh this it's not about black or white it's about industry and authentic yeah whether or not that's true you know I don't know if that's what Kendrick's doing but that that was his sort of take on it and okay. I was like that's pretty interesting yeah because certainly, why would it be about black and white? Right. Because they're both technically <laughs> yeah, yeah. black guys. I mean, Drake, yeah, that's the joke. Drake's right. half something else, but... Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that that's that was just like sort of like, okay, this is going to be a... This is going to be a weekend or a week, a couple of days or whatever. Of, yeah. Like paying attention and focusing on ideas and thoughts. So first day showed up Darren was just in the middle of his thing where he didn't know what this thing was going to be so he invited I don't know six guys out on different days some on the same days okay and uh, one guy couldn't make it Paul Gomez from from Hurley oh okay remember him he was supposed to be on the same day as me Uh, but he he had a surgery and was recovering from that and got hurt I don't know whatever okay anyway (laughs) he didn't make it not important, right? Uh, but real things happen, and and so it was just Dar- Darren was just doing his thing, and he called me over on the first day, which I was just kind of like supposed to be there because Tuesday was when 
I was actually going to be talking. Okay. And we just started talking, asked me questions, and we went for it again. And, and it wasn't a speech. It was uh, wasn't a talk. It was for him. It was kind of a talk. But when when he had the guests, it was a Q and A almost. Like he wanted to delve and, and move into areas based on like what my answers were and. It was really fun that way because I didn't really have to plan much. You know, I had some stories and I had some ideas, but for the most part, it was it was all about Darren kind of just asking me where to go. Okay. Of course, he goes, "Tell your story." You know, like tell tell us, you know, how it began. Yeah, that. was it just you guys, or was there? No, so there was there was uh, people that... there was like fifteen people a day. I would say just roughly. Okay, maybe a little bit more, but like not certainly not more uh, pain because a lot of the guys were part of uh, his company yeah and then there were guys from other companies like there was an auto uh, auto repair guy there that had owned his company you know and there was a, a quite a few guys that were more in, into the software stuff and Amazon services okay things like that yeah I guess it would universally applicable really yeah yeah and this was you know he didn't know what to expect so he right. <laughs> he he's he's gonna get a lot out of it based on you know what the experience was yeah and he'll get a lot of content out of it as well because all these ideas are very much valid and pretty interesting yeah <laughs> so the main takeaway for me and for really, I think everybody would be learn how to communicate because that's the only way to survive in this business world Right, is to communicate with the audience. And that means right now socials because yeah. there's a land grab and right now social media is free right? and it's dwindling and eventually it won't be. X is already making you pay to go live stream on X, hmm. to have more, uh, to be editable on your posts. You, you need to oh. pay, subscribe to it, to have a blue check or whatever for that, that good feel good feeling. Yeah. You gotta pay for that. So there are things happening in the social media realm where it's like moving towards a subscription model. And we just gotta take advantage of how it's free now. Yeah. Even if it's not, See, this is, it's a little different when it's a band because we're we're trying to get out to the world. Sometimes sometimes we're just trying to get out to Washington State, Tacoma, drivable distances, 21 and over, whatever, right, for this show coming up. Yeah. But if you're a local business, it's, I, I, I didn't even bring this up during the actual convention, uh, but, or the conference. Yeah. Uh, but if you're a local business, it's almost easier because you don't have to search for so many eyeballs. Right. You have a lot less. You're trying. We're trying to get billions of people to download our stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> the more, the merrier. But yeah. like some people can't actually handle the production. Like in a car service, you need yeah, you need people to continually be turning over new customers coming in. But you can only handle so many a day. Right. Yeah, there's a cap. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas we... We don't have a cap, so it's yeah, just that we never feel like we're doing good enough. You know, like it's... <laughs> right, right. It's like, yeah. uh, we, we, well, we, no, we do. We are doing great, because you, you, you measure it against your past data. Yeah. You go, okay, well, we've grown a lot, so we've grown over 100%, over 300% in some instances. But, uh, but yeah, we still want to sell or... Down, you know, have a million downloads, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Communication. But that's the problem is like, you don't have to do wacky videos on TikTok, but you have to do something like. Right. And sure, maybe you don't actually. Maybe you just focus on a few a few platforms because you just can't physically do it yourself. That's, yeah. But he's kind of preaching that because of that, if you're a business that makes millions, if you're a billion dollar business, you know, a half a billion dollar business, you need to be putting 
at least 10% of your marketing budget into social right for advertising right but also for that that means creating that content mm -hmm. and making it happen and he's and he's like but good luck finding anybody to do it because nobody will do it nobody can do it nobody can do it nobody knows what to do it's like mm -hmm. it's it's wild and you know it used to be you get like a video guy or you know photographer yeah but those people don't know what to do. They, they spend all day setting up a shot, and myself included. Yeah. And meanwhile, there's a TikToker that's put out 10 videos and made like $20,000 in a day or wow. whatever. You know what I mean? Like, so it's yeah. just like, yeah. the game has changed and passed us by in a lot of ways that we, we need to adapt to on certain platforms. Not every platform. There are, there are, I think, YouTube is especially something you could put out really nice videos on. And right. Not that we've really ever made money on YouTube, but but the platform, if it, if respected, technically should be rewarding you. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Jeez, we've tried so hard with YouTube and Facebook video to get the right amount to be able to monetize certain things and they don't really want to monetize everybody because yeah because then they'd be you know everybody would make money but right right so they just do it for a few I feel like because it's like the bar, they set the bar so high and then you, you reach the bar like something as simple as it's a couple years ago we were trying this alright you need to have a bunch of videos that are over 10 minutes long or over 7 minutes long there was like a certain threshold of time okay but it was like not a song it was not a, a music video length it was longer than that yeah and so you had to so we started releasing videos with extra bits on the end that would like talk about the video and tell everybody yeah. go do this that. so it made it long enough and we were getting views on those videos we were getting enough to monetize okay they yeah. still wouldn't do it like it's just like gee, how you know wow. it's like and you literally have to just get lucky I guess interesting it's like it's a good it's wild that's just one little thing but um, you know it, it doesn't mean you have to post every day but you have to be thoughtful yeah okay yeah thing. Yeah, but you, do, you should post every day something. Like we post every day stories, right? So, I guess technically that's posted every day. While we're in the cycle, it's different. Maybe I don't know if it's different now, but it feels like it's it was different. Where like okay, bands need to go away so that people are gonna like when they come back, they're excited. Yeah, and I think that's true. But it almost feels like people don't go away anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the social media, I guess, algorithm, whatever rewards you, or the incentive, I guess I should say, is, is to be consistently posting, right? Yeah. That's the incentive. Yeah. So this cycle of coming and going seems to be, like you said, it's kind of dying. Yeah. But, but but is it dying for artists? Is it different? I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure it is okay. for these newer artists. It maybe still is okay for Green Day to go away for a while and come back. You know. Right. Uh, right. Blink goes away for a little while and comes back bigger than ever. <laughs> I, I feel like we've done the same thing. We, we, when we came back in 2018, we were bigger than we were before that. Right. And right. then same with this new album. Uh, I feel like it's been even bigger. The crowds have been huge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All of that has been... You can't just do that all of a sudden. You have to work your way up. So it hasn't just been because of the records. It's been all of the whole ecostructure, the ecosystem of this is how you build an artist up mm -hmm. to play bigger rooms. You start right. here, you sell that out, you go up, you sell that out, you go up, you sell that out. That's what we've been doing. Right. All over, everywhere we go, Chicago, we played all these rooms, Bottom Lounge, House of Blues, and, you know, even bigger than that, but 
I can't remember now. Um, we're going to do something. Right. You know, we're going to go back, I think, to Chicago and, and probably play the Metro. Okay. But yeah. that used to be a place that was, like, big to us. And now right. it's going to seem tiny. I right. Think, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's just like when we think about... We're on the bus outside the Metro in Chicago. And we, I think about all the fans waiting for us outside. Mm-hmm. We come out. We're, we're, I think we're signing autographs. We're saying hi. The show was sold out. I was worried four hours earlier that no one was going to show up. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that was big. But you know what? The ticket was, I mean, obviously the, the with inflation, it's, it's a lot different nowadays, but the ticket was a lot lower. Sure, yeah. And we got paid a lot less. Mm-hmm. And it was around a thousand people, right? Whatever the Metro yeah. is. Something like that, uh, yeah. And that's, that was like what we did, those types of venues. And we sold them out. Yeah. And we think that was, well, sometimes some people think, and I used to think, that was our heyday. But that's not our heyday, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, that's like part of the rise to right. where we are now. Yeah. Which is kind of mind blowing if you think about it. Because everybody looks back on those golden years of like, that's when you guys were biggest. Right. But we were big then because we were coming up and we were, we were in all the news, but we're still, people still know about us. Right. People still see us. And know those songs. And we played yeah. in bigger crowds than ever. And they're paying to come see MXPX. Yeah. 4,000 people at the Palladium in Los Angeles, California sold out. Or whatever it was. Like more Yeah. Than- yeah. Yeah. That's a good kind of point we, of comparison. We used because, to play the whiskey. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think in our heyday, we... Uh, House, uh, House of Blues. You're thinking of that, that Blues, time period. Yeah, I don't think Sunset. That, yeah. I don't think we could have done the Palladium then, on our own, no. you know, like that. Yeah, so it's a good, a good uh, reminder that you know what we've been building over the years is working. Yeah, pretty or amazing. The way we've been doing it. Yeah. 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 Wow. We went away, then came back. You know, well, obviously COVID. But yeah. we didn't go away during COVID. We, we went away after that when people were kind of like getting back to their lives. We kind of went away for a bit on socials. We we're working on the new record. Yeah. In secret, in a way. Sure. Yeah. Just, just doing it. Yeah. And not in that mode at all. Not in that like communication with the outside world mode. Mm-hmm. And hey, it worked. It worked then. Will it work again? I don't know. We'll have to sort of re. Resus. Maybe we switch to a different type of social, like where we're like more chill, but not doing shows, not promoting, just doing like fun stuff. Okay. Yeah. It's all about fun. That, that's that's another thing that kind of got to distill down in the talk for me. Yeah. Was Darren was what reiterated really what I was already. I've already been saying in interviews over the years, but MXPX really is all about fun. That's what we sell. When you right. buy a ticket to a show, you know you're going to go and have fun. You're going to blow off steam. It's a positive experience. Yeah. It's not going to be something to be scared. Scare. It's not a scary show. I mean, the, sure. the pit can get crazy. You can get sure. punched. Sure. But. Yeah. 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 I remember my, my uh, buddy. Go my ahead. fiance got like an elbow oh no oh <laughs> no <laughs> hope she's okay oh yes yeah, I've got to say like this is kind of an older story but we were at oh, El Corazon or Graceland or what it was a long time yeah. ago and and uh, Ross Heater uh, he was a, an old uh, soccer buddy of mine and he had come out he works for Microsoft kind of guy now and, or Xbox or something like that and uh he came out to the show. I didn't know he was in the audience. I was like, I mean, if, if I had known, I would have put him on the side of the stage because it's a punk show, you know, yeah. like this this crowd, this, yeah. this venue. And as soon as he's like, oh, it's, it's like, looks fine, you know, <laughs> right before we start. And then as soon as we started, like, he got like knocked down, and, like knocked her, knocked her out. He's like, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's uh, funny. 
He was okay. Yeah. <laughs> he was our, uh, he was our, what was it, uh, well, goalie soccer. Oh, player. okay. <laughs> says, go, go, go into goalie mode. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, That's hilarious. But yeah. it's... Yeah, go, go I, I was just going to say, I was just going to comment on your comment about what we sell what it's like to be at our show. And I hate saying that, by the way. Sure, sure. <laughs> but when you're in the middle of a co- like a business conference, it's different. You can right. just use those buzzwords. But yeah. Sorry. But, but yeah. Uh, you know, I've I've had people like my fiance and other people that are are not we're not really familiar with us at all up until recently. Is it kind of the best when like, you like meet somebody? Yeah. And they get it. Yeah, and they're like noticing things because they're not they don't have no any yeah, bias no, yeah no okay. yeah no bias um you know and they're they're really coming from the most objective place when they're sitting there watching the show watching one of our shows except for like Yuri's the best <laughs> <laughs> uh she might be a little biased there yeah I'm sure there, but, um but yeah she was really like man this is a great show and I and I I agree I think what we do is I I really like what we've I mean we've kind of all I mean that's kind of always been what we do but I think it's I don't know I think we're just getting better at it over time you know and I think yeah we just put as much thought into it right 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 exactly I think there was those elements were naturally there already but yeah it wasn't I, I think you know anybody has it but we all have a tendency to drift away from our our ideas as craziness comes as life throws things at you especially in the business of touring the world yeah we get a little off track I did I know in, in throughout our career at times sure and I didn't have that sort of mantra of hey we're we are about we're about fun. Yeah. That's why people come. We we provide the party. We bring the party. Yeah. That's why party miles be there is a thing. And I never had that until more recently. Mm-hmm. You know, in the last I would say ten years. So kind of kind of realizing that's this realizing is, this, is, this is what we do. This is our mission. Or, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because it was all. I think before it was more about us and like. We're we're gonna go out there and, sh- and prove it to the world. Yeah. Sorry to keep quoting songs. I'm not <laughs> doing that on purpose. <laughs> but like that was like coming from a real place when I wrote that song. I think because yeah. we were always trying to prove ourselves. We were always the youngest. We were always, uh, you know, seen as the kids from the other, the the Washington. Who's from Washington? There's no other punk bands from Washington, really. So like. Right. Just we didn't have a big support group up in Washington, and so we latched on to bands like Pearl uh, Lou in early days, Blenderhead early days, Don't Know over in Seattle. But they were part of the punk scene. They were part of their own alternative Seattle scene. Right. And later became a national. You know, they were part of, more alternative. I'm just saying alternative yeah. weird music. Right. And so yeah. we stood out in that crowd as well because we were so punk. Early, early days. I'm talking 1993, yeah. 94. Right. Uh, you know, whenever we started, it was probably 94. We probably got signed and did all that all in the same year. That's how like the fast things. Busy, happen. busy, busy couple of years. But, but then you know, 90 pound was later. But the, they were signed to Tooth and Nail, so kind of uh, maybe not. At the, were they signed when we first met them? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, but it was pretty quick afterwards I think anyway my point is is we didn't have a huge support system like the guys down south like Pennywise and No Effects and Bad Religion yeah yeah face to face even you know they they were well maybe they didn't either because they were from a little further out Vacaville uh huh um not sure I can't speak for that but definitely the Southern California bands all knew each other and and all hung out, all saw each other at shows, all shared music ideas and news and 
and could watch each other play and go, okay, let's, let, yeah, we should have that too. Whatever, you know, we right. didn't have that. Right. We kind of did. We did our own version of that with Bad Juju. Kind of watched what they did. I mean, I kind of did that early on. Right. Before right. MXP's kind of got going, but luckily, <laughs> luckily or unluckily for you, Yuri, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy, uh, I lost the you know the first drummer yeah. that I ever you know that I had. And, right. And so I had to go looking for you. So you had to, yeah, yeah, you had to find somebody else. Yeah. That Juju stole. Them. But That's you know, so rightly funny. so. They didn't. I mean, I didn't actually have a band yet. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, and then there was Jeff Hazen also. Actually, he was the sure. second guy. Yeah. So technically, Jeff just uh, you know, I don't know. Just you know, it was. I think. My main thing, it wasn't Jeff, it was the overall realization that we've been playing for like months and we haven't been able to do like a, a full set mm. of songs. Mm. And when I played with you, we played like, even though you didn't know anything, we still played a bunch of songs. Right, we got through stuff. Yeah, yeah. and it was like, yeah. okay, this is the guy. Right. Yeah, it's, it's funny. You'd think that that would... Yeah, I didn't actually know that. I've never known that you were working like that before you met me and struggling to get through a set of songs. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I was good or anything, but it was all, it was all just like, okay, I have these songs. Yeah. Let's try to put a set together. Right. And... I don't remember what if I don't, we didn't we didn't even have a band name if I ever, I think I remember that yeah um, but we just jammed it was yeah. fun it was fun it was a probably a great it was probably really good for me to have that experience it's, you know whether it was very consciously or not yeah but just to realize what it takes to actually put a set of songs together and the fact that right. we did it in one week. And we yeah. got through two sets in yeah. one night. Yeah. And I couldn't even sing the first set. Right. right. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, I know when uh, when I first started playing drums, I knew Tom. Tom was a drummer. And I had some other friends, Nick Firstly. And, you know, yeah. and that was, those were the guys that I was trying to start a band with, Eric Buckham. And it was the same, kind of frustrating. We, but our problem was we no one was writing anything and when I met you when you were looking for a drummer you know you had already had quite a few songs for someone that had only been playing for I don't know a year-ish maybe about I don't a year know how long. yeah it was about a year before Mix Peak started that I started playing and writing yeah yeah so that was like oh that's the that's the thing that you know we were missing was songs you know and yeah I still remember that I think you had, I don't remember the number I want to say 50 but that might be exaggerated I don't know you had a lot of songs. I, I probably did almost have that many yeah you had and, and they were just like two chord songs to begin with and yeah yeah but they were songs they were you know? songs I mean it was, it was probably better that way. It's like, okay, good, I can do this. Yeah, Too yeah, hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Slow down on this, go fast on this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Building blocks of mm -hmm. music. Yep, yep. Man, I wish we had, like, record... I mean, I'm sure we do had some somewhere, recordings of a lot of those practices. But, jeez, yeah. like, what a... Wouldn't it be cool to have a recording of that first practice when your mom brought nachos down right. to the basement? Right. Yeah, yeah, there was really no, not even a photo of that. I don't, I don't think, think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's just my memory. I still yeah. remember it. But yeah, me too. Me too. It's wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The garage. We jammed in that garage and neighborhood kids would come by sometimes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I remember uh, one time we like, well, at least one time, set up kind of facing out. Into the <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, like, let's see how far we can like, uh, yeah. take this. Super funny. Or we played in the backyard, I think, even. Or no, maybe that was Nick and Eric Buckham, I think. That was when I was still playing maybe, with those guys. Maybe, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. 
It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That was Tom was always the know it all when it came to music. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember why you know I'd known Tom before I knew you. Um and I remember going to his practices. Well, we actually it was even after actually it was after this was after we were already a band. And I would go hang out with Tom at his band practices. I think like Evolution of Man. I yeah. think we went to an Evolution of Man practice. Was and, it at his house? Uh, I think it was at Dale Yobb's Dale house. Yobbs. Yeah. Oh yeah, out there. Okay. Um and Tom was so <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I remember thinking to myself, like, I never want to be in a band with that guy. He's just like, like, you know, he's just kind of up everyone's ass all the time for everything. Oh, yeah. Right. He was kind of the band leader <laughs> yeah. of that band. Yes, exactly. Wow. He, he was the one that was kind of kicking everyone's ass. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that till now. <laughs> oh, so oh, my. Funny. Yeah. Wow, that I mean, you got to so have much... somebody, right? Yeah, you have to. <laughs> you, do. you have to. You do I mean, have people to. People ask that a lot, like, who's the band leader? <laughs> Can you consider it's like I guess it to be, but it's only because of the songwriting. But yeah, to, yeah, you, the, you and Tom definitely like clash I mean, a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a good sure. thing, but it is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've I've not always. It's what I tell myself. Thought that way, but I, I think as I've gotten older, I've realized like no, like that. You need that kind of. How do you start a fire? Right, Friction. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or is that just what we try? No, I think it's, it's true. true. It is true, true, I think. Honestly, yeah. all the... That conflict and, yeah. and disagreements. I mean, it's kind of... I mean, it still happens, but I feel like... I don't know. It feels... It's a little bit more like we know we know what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we know that we're gonna we're about to, like get mad but it's not really worth getting mad over right we realize that i think while it's happening we're just like all right well, whatever just like yeah, let's yeah. just cool off yeah the stakes felt higher for some reason in the past and also we were a lot younger you know what i mean yeah things things got a lot more heated or i think we have it all those years behind us together, you know, or yeah, where you're just kind of like, all right, whatever. <laughs> I think we haven't always communicated, but we have communicated enough to where it's really actually probably helped. Yeah. And probably a lot more than most bands communicate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, you know, you hear so many stories about bands and Tracious D broke up again. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about this? No, is it real? Uh, I mean, it seems real. Okay. But I don't know. I don't know yeah. if it's a publicity right. stunt right. or... <laughs> I don't think it's a I think he could, It's like a cancel thing. It's like a Dixie Chicks thing where oh. he, they were in... Do you don't know the story? No, no, I don't. They were in Australia on tour a couple days ago. Okay. Last week, oh, probably. Wow. And... Okay, what's going on here? Just traffic, I think. Yeah. Um, I think it's just traffic. Yeah. Um, man, I wish we could get over to the plane. Over there. Yeah. Anyway, um, so they were on tour and it was, I don't know if this is a bit or if it actually was Kyle's birthday, KG's birthday. Okay. Um, over when I can. Sorry, not talking because I'm driving. Don't want to kill anybody. Yeah. Including myself. Should have been in the carpool lane a long time ago anyway. Well, but it was moving It was everywhere. moving pretty well. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, okay, so I don't know if it was a bit or if it was KG's birthday or what. Yeah. But... They brought out a cake and they're like, oh, happy birthday, KG. Make a wish. And he goes, I wish he didn't miss Trump. Oh. And 
KG, uh, Jack Black is like, oh, or something. I don't know what he said. Like, yeah. oh, and didn't didn't say like, oh, that was terrible. He just was like, he kind of just moved on. Okay. And they did the show, yeah. and then the clips went viral, and that's when Jack Black made a statement that said, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Um, I can't believe what KG said. I do not agree with violence against anyone, political violence, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. We're canceling the tour and all creative endeavors are put, being put on hold for Tenacious D. Wow. And KG's agent dropped him. Like, just like, oh, wait. Wow. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, y'all, like, okay, that's a joke, though, because you guys are comedians, so. Right, right. I just don't get it. But, yeah. you know, I'm not saying I condone violence against it. I wouldn't want right. anybody to be shot, but I also don't care if somebody makes a joke about it. Like, I wouldn't make the joke about it, but if I did, I would also be like, eh. <laughs> oh, right. oh, well, I, I probably shouldn't have done that, but, like, yeah. I just don't see it. Honestly, it's so weird. It is weird. It's very strange. Yeah, I've always felt like there's a safe space in comedy where you're allowed to yeah. say whatever the heck you want. It's a joke. It's not it's, a. Yeah. It's not a sexual assault. Right. It's not something that you need to like really take. I mean, if if Trump had died and and he had made a joke about that, equally not cool, but also a joke. Right. Cancelable, droppable, kind of ridiculous. Right. And I don't buy Republicans being outraged about this kind of thing because <laughs> <laughs> they they would be laughing at the meme no matter what if it was just as long as it's not somebody they love. Right. So. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah, for sure. I mean. Yeah, that's that's intense. But the Democrats self poning by. Self emulating and emulating, I guess it should be said, uh, 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 like with like canceling yourself. Because Jack Black just did all these uh, these fundraisers for Biden. He's like, oh, oh really? Yeah, literally last week. Oh wow. Uh, and so he, I guess he's he's a Democrat. He's on the left. Yeah. Uh, he's he's made it known. So like, both sides are kind of being ridiculous, but the self own is just stupid. I get that Republicans are just going to whine because they're everybody just going to whine. Yeah, always. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Noise, noise, noise. That's their brand. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Uh, oh, wow. But so there's that. Let's uh, we can uh, was, put a button on politics. And, yeah. Well, I was just. I was like thinking about how we got here. We're just talking about bands and inner band relationships. And, yeah. You know, you hear like, about why not them. just talk to Cage, right? Well, yeah. Well, yeah, you just, I mean, that, yeah, that's sort of a crazy situation. But yeah, so many bands implode and break up and leave. And I mean, I, or certain members will leave, you know, um, on bad terms. And I'm glad that we haven't done that, you know. I'm yeah. glad that we've managed to avoid that but yeah, I think it's because we work through our differences, eventually, you know, getting past them. Yeah. And we have to work through them pretty quickly because we don't, there isn't a lot of time that goes by between us working. You know, it's yeah. basically, we're kind of constantly working. Um, yeah, so we got to work things out. There's not time for uh, resentment to build. We got to yeah. work through, things through. Yeah. Um, Dude, I mean, what? No effect show? Yeah. When I had a moment, and I, not your fault. Oh, that was at Bremerton. Oh, was that Bremerton? Yeah, that bass drum head thing. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right, Bremerton. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, I don't want, I don't want to go down this road right now. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and I, I don't know. It was. It's like I, expectations. I, right, and I that. thought after we had worked everything out, I was just thinking about different ways that that could have been handled 
both on my, mostly me. Like, how could have I? How could I have handled that differently? Because I got defensive too. You know, like I got defensive when it's really like it could have just been just oh yeah, just change it out. This. Yeah, but it was. I'm glad we were able to talk through it because yeah, it just reminded me that yeah, you don't always know the reasons why someone is bent out of shape. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all Tom's fault. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, it, those little tiny yeah, those miscommunications or non-communications that are in and of themselves not much, but then they build to this moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it would be fine if that moment, if it, if you had chose the other way, you know what I mean? It wouldn't right. have ever ever come up. Right. Yeah. Totally. And right? like, and I, and I was thinking that was the other thing. I was like, why didn't I choose the other way? Like, how long has that been the sticker? Forever. Like, real, right. like for a really long time. Like, yeah. I think I was, I was like, ooh, something different, you know? And I totally. I just thought. Oh, this is fun. I was just in that mode and I was not thinking at all. That's beyond totally, myself, that's fair. You know? like, Absolutely. <laughs> As, and, and I'm not always thinking that, okay, this is our branding, but since I've, you know, I've beaten that into my own head yeah. about the stage setup and how it looks and, you know, there's variations. Yeah. There's going to be yeah. variations or whatever, but right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like one thing. Yeah, it, it, it was not your fault at all. You're not supposed to be thinking about branding when somebody hands you some things. <laughs> You're just, it's a shiny object. Right, right? that's Boom. totally what it was. It was totally like, oh, this is shiny, I like this. Yeah, yeah. of course. Somebody hands me a new Stingray I have played before. Oh, yeah, let me check it out. Let me right. try this. Yeah. Play this tonight. Probably not a good idea to play it the night of the show, but I'll do it anyway. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, that was the... I'm glad we had that moment, though. I really am. But just because, uh, you know... It's a lesson learned. Yeah. For and, both of us. Yeah, and I... I definitely, in my... I mean, for all of my life, have been very conflict-avoidant. You know? I will not say what I feel like saying just to avoid the conflict. And it's more than a habit, you know, even yeah. at this point in my life where I I know that that's not good <laughs> that it's, you know that it's a detriment to relationships when you do that um but it's still really difficult to even knowing that, to make those decisions, and I, that wasn't one of those situations where I was like, I'm gonna get mad <laughs> or whatever, you know like, I was upset you know, and but I'm glad that that happened and we worked through it. You know, yeah. I felt like ah, okay, this just felt like a moment of okay. There's some more. There's an authenticity here. You know, in the fact that we're having to kind of face each other like this. yeah, misunderstanding. Here's what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I mean, you don't I, communicate, then you you think the worst and I think the worst. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And it's. I mean, I kind of look at your relationship with Tom as kind of that I've noticed, you know, obviously you guys are more, you there's more conflict there but then there's also more authenticity there you know, like I, yeah. I can see both sides yeah, you know and I, I mean, I'm not Tom I'm not you, so I'm not, we're not gonna have those same, that same relationship, but I can learn something from watching you guys you know yeah and I have but you know it's just it takes time to put things into practice sometimes I want to get over soon yeah um yeah can I well uh, I don't really know when to? <laughs> yeah 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 can you yeah I know I, th I ran into this a couple of weeks ago when I was driving over here where I had to get off at like uh, middle I mean, at some point you just gotta do yeah it. you just gotta do it <laughs> cause yeah it, it leaves you kind of over here if you're in the I don't know why they're doing this but 
seem to do with the construction, I'm imagining. Did it? Because we're getting close. We're a couple yeah, it's like away. the yeah. So the next one or close. Oh yeah, now he can get over. Oh okay. <laughs> I was trying to get off here, South 200, and then, oh, yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, I gotta go. So we'll wrap it up uh, yeah. in closing. Communication again, no matter what you're trying to do. Yeah. Business wise, if you're trying to make sales or whatever. I don't know much about that, but I hear communication is good. Yeah. And then for us, you know, in a band, it's like to stay together, communication. Yep. And having technology, being able to be on a group chat with the crew and everybody, that brings us all together so much yeah. in a cool way. Mm -hmm. Where you had to just like be. I mean, we're, we're together too, but like we had to just be together and and now we can kind of like have that camaraderie before we're even together. Just right. like as we're, as we're getting to, getting ready to go. Yep. So it's cool. Yeah, no, it is cool. It's very cool. All right. Virtual hug to everyone. <laughs> <laughs>